In this video, we'll learn a few rules for calculating derivatives, namely the power rule and the derivatives of sums, differences, and constant multiples. These rules will give us shortcuts for finding derivatives quickly without needing to resort to the old limit definition of derivative. In this video, we'll only do statements of the rules and some examples. There won't be any proofs or justification for why the rules hold. Instead, these proofs will be in a separate later video. Let's start with some basics. First of all, if we have a constant, c, and we will have the function f of x equals c, so if I graph that, it's just going to be a straight horizontal line. So the derivative, df dx, ought to be 0, because the slope of the tangent line of this straight line is just 0. Another simple example is the derivative of the function f of x equals x. So again, if I draw the graph, it's just going to be a straight line with slope 1. And so the tangent line for this straight line will also have slope 1. And the derivative, f prime of x, has to be always equal to 1. These two simple examples are actually special cases of the power rule, which is one of the most useful rules for calculating derivatives. So the power rule says that if you have the function y equals x to the n, where n is any real number, then you can find the derivative dy dx simply by pulling that exponent n down and multiplying it in the front and then reducing the exponent by 1. So for example, if you want to calculate the derivative of y equals x to the 15th, dy dx here is just going to be 15 times x to the 15 minus 1, or 14. The second example, f of x equals the cube root of x, might not immediately look like an example where we can apply the power rule. But if we rewrite it by putting the cube root in exponential notation as x to the one-third, now we can apply the power rule. We bring the one-third down and multiply it on the front, and we reduce the exponent of one-third by one. Well, one-third minus one is negative two-thirds. So we found the derivative here using the power rule. We could rewrite it if we want to using exponent rules as 1 over 3x to the 2 thirds. Either answer is good. In the third example, g of x is 1 over x to the 3.7. Again, we need to do a little rewriting before we can apply the power rule. So I'm going to rewrite g of x as x to the minus 3.7, using exponent rules. Now I can find dg dx by pulling down the negative 3.7, multiplying in the front. And now I have to reduce negative 3.7 by 1. So I subtract 1. That gives me x to the negative 4.7. Again, I can rewrite this, if I wish, as negative 3.7 over x to the 4.7. It's important to notice that in all these examples, and in fact, in any example where the power rule applies, the variable x is in the base, and the exponent is just a constant, just a real number. The constant multiple rule says that if c is just a constant real number, and f is a differentiable function, then the derivative of c times f of x is just c times the derivative of f of x. In other words, when we take the derivative, we can just pull a constant outside of the derivative sign. Let's use this rule in an example. If we want to take the derivative of 5x cubed, that's the same thing as 5 times the derivative of x cubed. And now using the power rule, we can bring down the 3 and get 15x squared. If 
f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of f of x plus g of x is the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. Similarly, for a difference, if f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of the difference is just the difference of the derivatives. Now let's use all these rules together to calculate the derivative of this polynomial. To find dy dx, we can use the sum and difference rule to calculate the derivative of each term separately. Now using the constant multiple rule and the power rule, we can bring out the 7, bring down the 3, get an x squared here. Similarly, for the next term, 5 times 2 times x to the 1. 4 times the derivative of x, which is just 1, and the derivative of a constant 2 is just 0. So simplifying, we get 21x squared minus 10x plus 4, and notice that the derivative of the original polynomial is just another polynomial of one less degree. Here are a few more examples. The derivative of the square root of x plus the square root of pi well, I can split this up as a sum. Now, the derivative of the square root, I can apply the power rule here, because the square root of x is just x to the 1 half. I suppose I could rewrite the square root of pi the same way if I want to. Now, applying the power rule, I get 1 half times x to the 1 half minus 1. That's minus a half. It's tempting to do the same thing with pi to the one-half here, but don't, because pi here is just a number, just a constant. The square root of pi is also a constant, so the derivative of the square root of pi here is just zero. Rewriting a little, if I wish, I can write this as 1 over 2 x to the one-half using exponent rules, or 1 over 2 square root of x is kind of a nice way to write it. In the next example, notice that my variable here is t, not x. So I want to calculate the derivative with respect to t. In other words, d dt of 1 over 4t squared. Before I can start applying my rules, I'm going to try to rewrite this expression as a constant multiple times a power of t. Now I can bring down the exponent of negative 2 and multiply that by 1 fourth and bring the exponent down by 1 to negative 3. So I'm getting negative 2 fourths t to the minus 3, or in other words, negative 1 half t to the minus 3, or negative 1 over 2t cubed. This example is a little more interesting. It asks us to find the slope of the tangent line and the normal line to this function 3x squared minus 2x over the square root of x at x equals 1 fourth. So 1 fourth is about right here. So that corresponds to maybe this point right here. And ballpark, the tangent line is going to look something like this this, whereas the normal line is the line perpendicular to the tangent line. So that's going to be at right angles, and it's going to look something like this. It's kind of fun to pause here and estimate the slope of the tangent line and the normal line from these rough slopes so that we can then compare our estimates to our exact values that we calculate using calculus. So now I'm going to go ahead and try to use calculus to find the derivative of 3x squared minus 2x over square root of x at x equals a fourth. Now this horribly complicated looking expression can actually be simplified to one that we can handle. So if I just split up this sum into pieces, and then apply my exponent rules to simplify here. Subtracting exponents in my quotient, I get 3 times x to the 2 minus a half, so that's 3 halves, 
minus 2 times x to the 1 minus a half, so that's 1 half. Now applying my constant multiple and power rules, I'm just going to get 3 halves times 3, so that's 9 halves, times x to the 3 halves minus 1, so that's 1 half, minus 2 times 1 half, that's 1, times x to the 1 half minus 1, that's negative a half. And so my derivative is 9 halves square root of x minus 1 over the square root of x. And if I plug in x equals 1 fourth to this expression, I get the derivative of g at x equals a fourth is 9 halves the square root of a fourth minus 1 over the square root of a fourth. Well, the square root of a fourth is a half. So I'm just getting 9 halves times a half minus 1 over a half, which simplifies to 9 fourths minus 2, or 1 fourth. So I've just found the slope of my tangent line, and 1 fourth seems kind of reasonable for that slope. Now to find the slope of my normal line, I just use the fact that anything perpendicular will have a negative reciprocal slope. So the negative reciprocal of 1 fourth is negative 4. And that's the slope of my normal line here. As our last example, let's see if we can figure out what, at what x values the tangent line to this expression is horizontal. So based on the graph here, I can see immediately that there are two places, at least, where the tangent line is horizontal. It looks like when x is negative 1 and when x is 0, although there might be some more that aren't shown in this graph that are sort of off the screen. So let's use some calculus here, and the tangent line being horizontal means the derivative is 0. So let's take the derivative, dy dx. I'm going to rewrite x cubed times this expression simply by multiplying things out and get x to the fifth minus 10x to the fourth minus 15x cubed. Now I can easily take the derivative. Um, derivative of x to the fifth is 5x to the fourth. Derivative of 10x to the fourth is, let's see, 4 times 10 is 40 times x cubed. Derivative of the next part, 3 times 15 gives me 45x squared. And I want to know when is that derivative equal to 0. So setting it 0, I can factor here. Let's see, I'll factor out a 5x squared and get x squared minus 8x minus 9. I can factor some more and get x minus 9 times x plus 1. So that's going to be equal to 0 when either x squared is 0, so that's the same as saying when x is 0, or when x minus 9 is 0, so that's when x is 9, or when x plus 1 is 0, so that's x equals negative 1. So I found the two places that are shown, and then somewhere off the graph here, this function must also have a tangent line with slope 0 at x equals 9 way off in this direction. In this video, we use some shortcuts to calculate the derivatives of various functions, especially polynomials. If you're interested in seeing where these rules come from, how they're derived from the limit definition of derivative, then look for another video coming soon on proofs.